All right, welcome back everyone for our Q&A. Uh, we have quite a few questions in the lineup and then also I have to just give you a disclaimer. Uh, what I'm about to tell you as far as advice, just check with your doctor before implementing any of the stuff that I talk about. And so we're gonna just dive right in. We're gonna take a call, I guess, from Australia, right, uh, Steve? We are, Sharang from Sydney, Australia, and he has toothpicks holding his eyeballs open because it's like one o'clock in the morning there, so we decided to let him go on first. Sharang, you're on with Dr. Berg. Yeah, doctor, uh, thank you very much for uh, having me in this forum. So in the interest of time, I will quickly jump into the question. So. Uh, my main concern is uh, vitiligo, uh, which I'm having for past uh, almost six years now. And uh, regarding my medical conditions, so uh, I have uh, I am on levoxithyroxine 150 mg uh, that I take every day, and then I was on phenofibrate 160 uh, to control my high triglyceride levels. Uh, which my doctor has recently changed to fish oil four capsules a day and uh, Rosso boosting 10 mg uh, just to try whether uh, we can get rid of uh, phenofibrate drug and uh, get triglycerides under control uh, using this uh, uh, and, and, uh, fish oil. And uh, I, I have done kind of a light therapy for one and a half year, uh, three times a week. Uh, but that didn't help me much uh, with uh, improving this condition. And I tried intermittent fasting as well, and I lost almost 13 kg of my weight. Uh, but again, uh, the spread didn't stop. And in fact, I observed that during those four months where, when I was on strict diet, it was more progressive during those four months. So I'm not, not sure whether a coincidence or whether, the, whether I, I, I was having some improper diet so, uh, yeah, so I just want your guidance on uh, uh, what diet to follow and what supplements I should be taking uh, just to see sure. how this condition improves. So um, did the light therapy, the light therapy did nothing, but what about the medication? Did that do anything for you? Uh, <clears throat> No, I, I wasn't on any vitiligo internal medicines. I was not taking any of those. So, it, it but you're taking them right now. Therapy. I, th I thought you're taking in two medications right now, right? Uh, yeah, for my thyroid and for high triglycerides. So yeah, those are two medications that I take like every day. Okay, so. Um, 90% of low thyroid conditions, hypothyroidism, is Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease. Now that just, and also vitiligo can also be an autoimmune disease. But um, I think the, uh, I'm curious, when you first got it, do you remember when you first got it? Was it all of a sudden? Uh, I know it was a tiny little spot on my finger and then I, I remember it was summer and it was still under control but as winter approached and it suddenly started spreading. And was there anything yeah, that occurred uh, just be... No, does anything, anything happen just before this like a stress situation? Uh, not really not that bad stress or something I remember. Okay. So, so here's the thing. Um, vitamin D, um, I, I, in these situations, you know, there's something new, um, that has kind of, uh, recently been kind of promoted and it's, it's more people are knowing about it, but when you get DNA testing, you could find out a lot about what's going on inside the body, especially, uh, with the vitamin D receptor being maybe like a, a mutation with the vitamin D receptor. So, so um, here you doing the typical things, they should work, but they don't work. Um, even like people that uh, uh, are on, uh, doing light therapy or getting the sun, um, one little component part of that is related to vitamin D, um, just the interaction because the vitamin D is like a, a steroid. And that also is involved in, um, 
helping people with any type of autoimmune conditions. So I would get a, um, a DNA test just to see if there's any uh, genetic uh, weaknesses that you need to know about in relationship to vitiligo and vitamin, and I think vitamin D is, the, is a remedy. And let's say, for example, they find you have um, some, it's called a polymorphism for vitamin D receptor. Um, what that means is you can't absorb vitamin D like other people. So it doesn't really, you don't get the benefits of immune protection and even like the prevention of autoimmune problems, which could also tell you a little bit about the thyroid. So um, I would um, do that. And in the meantime, I would start taking large amounts of uh, vitamin D3, like maybe 40,000 I use to, per day to see if that doesn't help you and um, start turning this around. Uh, I would do that and then check the genes and then see if there's any problem there. And uh, because we need to, we need more clues on, I mean, going into winter also is another indication. If it got worse during winter is another indication. Yeah. Vitamin D is connected to this as well. Um, and also stress could be, even though you didn't have anything uh, stressing you out, but those are the couple things I would recommend. And of course I would get on keto and fasting and then, do periodic prolonged fasting for a lot longer because uh, especially if you have a uh, hypothyroidism, you want to do the, uh, the fasting for that. And of course, avoid gluten too. That's the most important thing, but you, I know you wouldn't do that if you were doing keto. So we don't have to worry about that. All right. Well, thanks. And I guess now you can go back to bed, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You've been a good sport, Sharang, and I hope you uh, Sarang, excuse me. And I hope that you will uh, get back with us after you've, uh, you know, move through some other uh, approaches to what's bugging you, and we'd love to hear back from you. Sorry we're not on at midnight, so it could be noon for you, but that's the uh, the roll of the dice, for goodness sakes. Anyway, thanks again. All right, so uh, listen, we are have a, a great audience of six here in our green room, but it's just unbelievable how many folks we also have from around the world. And let me get to our list. And Eddie, um, uh, Terry already amended it because there's so many to keep pouring in. So let's say we can get to everybody. We'd like to say a good morning to all of our viewers joining us from the UK. By the way, we have uh, uh, we have one coming up with us uh, sh uh, shortly. Rena, I believe, and uh, Canada, Jordan, the Philippines, Poland, Mexico, Chile, uh, Belgium, Australia, Pakistan, Nepal, Sweden, Bermuda, G Germany, Jamaica, Algeria, Cameroon, France, Egypt, the Netherlands, Iran, New Zealand, Dubai. Trinidad and Tobago, Japan, India, Nigeria, Argentina, Ghana, Switzerland, South Africa, Colombia, Spain, Morocco, Kuwait, Iraq, Bolivia, good grief, Norway, Mumbai, uh, the Czech Republic, Malta, Turkey, St. Lu Lucia, Croatia, Ireland, the United Arab Emirates, Greece, I don't think we've heard from them for a while, Saudi Arabia, Kenya, Peru, Scotland, Costa Rica, Tunisia, Russian, Romania, Barbados, good grief, Ethiopia, I Iceland, I think we've made a record, Malaysia, Luxembourg, uh, and then, boy, it just, let's see. Oh, finally, L Lebanon, Finland, Estonia, and all <gasps> across these United States. And thanks, many thanks to Terry again for his swollen fingertips from typing it all in. I don't know how he does it so quickly, but that's great. And let's go right over to our friends, speaking of people around the world. Zipporah from Facebook, is it possible for a vegetarian to do healthy keto? Yeah, it's definitely possible. It's not easy, but it's possible. It, with the being a vegan, you have to uh, get enough protein. You have to keep the carbs lower, which is harder, and get more fat. So and then you're going to have to supplement, like uh, with the DHA. That's omega-3 fatty acids. You can get that from algae um, and even mushrooms. You can actually uh, – you can um, well, no, not mushrooms, but you can get them from algae and different – like even spirulina. But with vitamin D, you can actually get them through mushrooms. If you actually soak them in the sun, uh, let them be sun-dried, you can get a tremendous amount of vitamin D from that. You can make your own vitamin D. Um, also, you're going to have to substitute, you know, um, other things. Um, like it's difficult to get B12, for example. And unfortunately, the type of, um, like, iron that you're going to get from plants is, is not heme-based, so it's not as bioavailable. The type of vitamin A you get from plants um, are, is, is going to be the precursor, the beta carotene that has to convert into retinol, which is like, that's going to be hard to get uh, 
the vitamin A to the active form. So if possible, if you could go from being a vegan to a vegetarian, that might be better because then you can have eggs. Um, that would be the, uh, that would give you a lot of nutrition right there. But um, yes, I guess that's the long answer to that question. The answer is yes. Very good. Okay, over to Mystic Melody uh, from YouTube. My mom is in her 70s and was in very poor health. I started her on keto with plenty of nutritious food and your supplements. She had her gallbladder removed, and I tried giving her the bile salts, but it just gave her diarrhea. So we stopped those. Any suggestions to help my mom out? Okay, so what's happening now is she's uh, obviously, um, she doesn't have a gallbladder. So she has a, this the bile ducts is going right into the small intestine. So she is getting bile. Apparently she's, it's draining out at a certain rate. And the fact that you took bile and she has diarrhea just tells me that you don't need any right now. So there's enough because anytime you have too much bile, you'll get diarrhea. So that's a good clue to know that, you know what, you have enough right now. So uh, not everyone that has the gallbladder removed becomes deficient in bile. Uh, it really depends on, you know, how your tubes are draining into the small intestine, um, that type of thing. So I think she's fine right now, but just kind of monitor over time, maybe test it in maybe six months and see if you can give her some if she needs some. Um, but also look for the stool. If the stool starts floating or it's light color or there's skid marks on the toilet um, bowl, then we know that she needs some bile because she's not digesting the fat or she, we're driving at night and hard to see in the dark is, a, is another situation. There are some people who apparently grow back their gallbladders. So they're like a remnant gallbladder. So who knows? Your, your mother might grow her gallbladder back to some degree, and that would be a great thing, right? So, Absolutely. Okay, now, drum roll, please. Here's our first question of the day, and we got a bunch of true falsers, and here it is, Doc. Okay, true or false? The majority of total cholesterol is merely HDL and LDL. All right, Smarty Pants yeah, audience, true. climb on that. True or false? So you got a 50-50 chance of being smart on today's show. We got a lot of true um, falsers. I, said, I think I want to add one tweak in one word. Um, is it mostly HDL and LDL? Yeah. Not merely. Oh, got it. Okay, very good. Mostly. Jump on it, folks. Still 50-50 chance of being smart. Karen from Facebook, I feel giddy when I go 20 hours or more on my fast, but afterwards I feel, uh, after I refeed, excuse me, I lost that for a second, but after I refeed, I feel very, very tired. How come? Yeah. I, it's so funny how you do all this fasting and all of a sudden you start eating and you feel terrible. You don't feel very good, feel tired. So just goes to show you, maybe we don't need as much food as we think. Um, but yeah, so I've noticed that especially when you're in the transition phase, when you do this, maybe the first three, four, five, six months, you know, your body does have a hard time going back and forth, switching. Um, so I think you just need to give it more time so you're fully keto adapted because um, I know with myself, I feel great when I don't eat and then I don't feel as great when I eat. So, so how do you handle that? You have to eat eventually. So uh, unfortunately, fasting is something you can't do forever. Um, but uh, you can definitely go for longer periods of time. So maybe your body say, you're telling you, you know, go longer. All right, very good. Uh, Shrey from YouTube, I'm getting black and blue spots appearing suddenly all over my hands and legs. They look a lot like bruising, but I haven't bumped into anything lately. What could be the cause? Well, that sounds like it uh, could be a vitamin A deficiency. I'm sorry, K1 deficiency. So uh, are you eating any leafy, dark leafy greens or not? Um, that's one thing. Also, it could be uh, a problem with uh, calcium. Calcium deficiency could also create um, those spots. Um, there's other reasons too, but they're more rare, like uh, diabetes, um, other chronic type problems internally. But those are the two ones that come to mind right off the bat. So... If you just start adding more vitamin K1, let's see if the, those spots go away. Okay, we're all uh, hoping uh, that they do indeed go away. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, Hendrick from Facebook. Finally, we got a Facebooker in here. How can I get my glucose levels down after losing 19 pounds on intermittent fasting? 
you said, how do I get my blood sugars down after moving 19 pounds? After losing, sorry. Oh, okay. So now the, now the, the, the blood sugars are, are too high. Is Apparently that what saying, yeah, trying to get his glucose down. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're in keto, I'm guessing you are, I'm assuming you are, and your blood glucose is too high. Um, that just means that, you know, it's not coming from the sugar you're eating. It could come from um, eating too much protein, possibly. But another reason is that you still have insulin resistance, which takes some time to correct. And uh, so your liver basically is, uh, you know, the signaling mechanism is still not quite um, good, the um, kind of the thermostat. So now you have this, um, this overproduction of sugar. It's called gluconeogenesis in the liver. And so that's where it's coming from. So what you can do is you can add more exercise to burn off that sugar, give it more time. Apple cider vinegar is a necessity that will bring it down. And then you can do other things too, berberine, uh, chromium, cinnamon, B1, magnesium, vitamin D. These are all key things to help insulin resistance. That's what's really going on. Give it more time and uh, it will it will come down. All right, terrific. Let's see here. I had an interesting one. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, I forget her name. Uh, uh, it just popped up and away from me. But anyway, this uh, lady wanted to know whether uh, intermittent fasting would help her prostate. Now, I hope she's not talking about herself. That would be medical history, but I assume it's her partner or male. So is there anything you can do to uh, get the enlarged prostate yeah. down? Yeah, yeah. Um, that would greatly help the prostate because it's like you're you're going to do you're going to induce something called autophagy, which is a uh, your body is going to start to uh, um, recycle old damaged tissue. Your inflammation is going to go down. Your immune system is going to go up. So for any type of enlargement of any gland, uh, that would be the thing I would recommend. The other thing to avoid would be dairy. Um, I've done a lot of videos on prostate, so you should watch all of them. There's some more things to do. All right, very good. I'm sorry, that was Rochelle from Facebook. Can keto help uh, treat enlarged prostate? So, Rochelle, we hope that your friend with a prostate uh, has uh, get some relief from that. So, let's see. Why don't we go to our quiz question, uh, the first one that we had. And uh, the audience was asked, the majority of total cholesterol is mainly, I'll change that, HDA, excuse me, HDL and LDL. And the audience, 90% say that it's false, 10% say it's true. How'd they do? This, this, is, uh, this is really uh, important because, um, you know, confu- there's so much confusion with cholesterol. Um, so when you look at your total cholesterol, okay, realize that you're not really measuring just this cholesterol floating in your arteries like cholesterol. It's what you're looking at the little shuttles or the little minivans that are transporting the, uh, the cholesterol. And those are uh, made out of protein. And so we, it, they're called lipoproteins, lipo being fat protein. So, um, and so they're shuttled around. So the um, total cholesterol, you're really evaluating the, all the cholesterol inside of the HDL and LDL. And um, the HDL is supposedly the good cholesterol. That's the cholesterol that comes from the arteries back to the liver, and then the LDL goes from the liver to the arteries or the cells. So it's kind of like just depending on what direction it's going determines um, the type of shuttle bus. So I'm going to be releasing a, a very important video on the two different types of measurements of LDL, which I think is going to be beneficial for a lot of people because when you do keto, you may find your LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol, goes up. And you might be alarmed, right? Because I know someone's going to ask this question today. So you look on your blood test. It says, oh, my gosh, my LDL slash C, that's for cholesterol, is higher on keto. Uh Uh-oh, I have a problem. Well, what? Basically, beg your doctor to do. It's an advanced profile to measure the LDLP. What is LDLP? That's the particle size. So that's a different measurement, which is way more important. 
And that is like you have two, uh, you have the, um, the small dense ones and you have the large buoyant ones. So those are the two sizes. So just envision that um, the small dents can easily invade your arteries and create problems. That's the real bad one. But the large buoyant one, the large buoyant um, LDL is not the one that is um, going to create a problem for you. And so here you are eating more fat, losing more fat, having more fat through the body. Think about it. That has to be carried all around the body it has to be carried through the body, right? Um, how do you do it? It has to be through my shuttle. So that's why you're going to see a higher LDL. But the um, the type of LDL is going to be the large buoyant. It's not going to be the small dense one. So um, I hope I didn't confuse you more. But that's stay tuned for that video because this way you won't be uh, alarmed. It's not to be concerned with anything that's going to create a problem. But that cholesterol has to be mobilized. It has to come out. And um, I am going to be talking about one of the best things you can do to uh, help yourself with that as well. If you, if you, let's say you have a, I don't know, a genetic problem with cholesterol or you're concerned, there's, a, there's quite a few things you can do to um, even lower it if you want to. Okay, I got a plan here, Doc. I'm going to get some good news from Facebook, put up our next quiz question, then go to Rena in the UK. So that's our order. Chris from Facebook, your YouTube videos rock. So informative. I've learned so much from you. Thank you for doing these live shows for us. So we're glad that you're happy with that, Chris. And by that, uh, you know, viewership that Terry types out each, uh, each week, it's evident that people all over the world feel the same way that Chris does. And here's our next true falser. Okay, true or false. Niacin, that's B3, raises your bad cholesterol, the LDL. All right. Climb on that, folks. And then next up, uh, we're putting uh, Rena on the air. Rena, you're on with Dr. Berg. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Berg. Hello. Um, okay, so in 2010, I gave up sugar completely in my diet. I was 170 kilos, and I followed a very low-carb diet. And then in 2018, I started keto, and I've been on keto since 2018. Um, last year I needed an iron infusion, um, and then all of a sudden my pancreas went crazy and I was in hospital for a while. And ever since then, I started to have episodes where I'd actually start to shake, get really hot and pass out. I didn't know what was going on, but anyway, I then saw an endocrinologist because this kind of like was going on for a while. I saw an endocrinologist this year and she did a, a mixed meal test. MMTT or something, a mixed meal tolerance test. And she's done uh, blood tests to, to clear me for pre-diabetes and diabetes. And the mixed meal tolerance test actually indicated that I have got reactive hypoglycemia. So that was interesting. Now, for the last two months, I've been following intermittent fasting, and I love it. It's way of life for me. And I've now been told that because it's now not just reactive hyperglycemia, it's also hyperglycemia, because uh, it's happening at any given time of the day. Um, when I wake up in the morning, it's around 3.8, my level. And um, my last meal is normally 6 p.m. the previous day. So I've now been put on Acrobot, yeah, three times a day. And I've been told to now introduce low GI index foods and start eating small regular meals. I don't want to do that. I want to keep fasting. I need your help. <laughs> so, question: mm -hmm. Did, did um, do you feel bad when your blood sugars go low? Very bad, like really bad. I like okay. I, yeah, I lose consciousness. I and then when I come around, I'm so disorientated. It's horrible, really horrible. Yeah, I think what's happening is that when you had that iron infusion, the way they get, the type of iron they gave you is probably some elemental ferrous sulfate or some type of mm. bad iron that created damage onto the pancreas. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. So, um, so iron from like a, a heme source, like, um, liver, for example, or uh, animal red meat or, or even spleen extract pills that you can get as well. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that I would, um, 
of course, now you just have this, this issue. I would, there's a great supplement from Standard Process. It's called Pancreatrophin PMG. Pancreatrophin PMG. You can order some of that. Start taking one before bed just to see if you can actually improve uh, the pancreatic function because uh, that's what you really need to do. Um, as far as, um, you know, what's happening is why would you have um, hypoglycemia? So what keeps your blood sugars low? Well, it's, it's insulin. Insulin is too high. Insulin is pushing your blood sugars too low. Um, so I would love to see a test done to measure um, your insulin levels. And also your, it's, um, there's another test called HOMA IR, which measures for insulin resistance. I think you have hyperinsulinemia um, because there's damage somehow to the pancreas. And now your beta cells just pumping out too much insulin. That's really what's creating the problem. So if you go on a a regular diet, what will happen is um, it just will just raise that insulin even more and push your blood sugars down even more. So, you know, their solution is to kind of keep keep your blood sugars up with with more sugar, which then just fuels more problem until eventually the pancreas cell gets burnt out. But here's the big <clears throat> concept here. You want to start healing the cells that are producing insulin, and that would be um, the beta cells. So, you know, you might want to tweak what you do until you get it just perfect, but you're going to, you know, like vitamin D is important, vitamin C, um, chromium, um, things like that. that those, those are all things that will um, support the beta cell, but also the pancreatrophin PMG would be, I think, greatly, uh, it'll help you a lot. So um, in the meantime, you have to check, check your blood sugars, and if it, maybe they come down too low, maybe in the meantime... You know, you fortify them with some some protein. Now, the problem with protein is if you have really low blood sugars and you eat protein to raise it, it's going to take time to raise it. So maybe if you start seeing down, eat some protein, because it's not like blood glucose is going to spike your blood sugar. It's going to take some time to bring it back. And you kind of want something to work a little bit faster. So I would maybe... Um, consume it as it starts to come down a little bit. So then that way it won't get really low. Um, okay. So I think that's, unfortunately you, that darn um, iron treatment did something with, yeah. I think either the liver or the pancreas. So you might need another test to see if, you, if there's a full functioning liver or full functioning pancreas to kind of isolate what you need to focus on. That's another thing I would do. Okay. So can I continue intermittent fasting? Well, um, of course, I can't tell you to do something for your medical condition, but uh, you might want to test it out and play around and see how you do. Um, okay. You might have to, you know, um, keep tweaking it until it works for you. But um, obviously, we don't want you to be in a dangerous situation with your with severe low blood glucose and feeling like crap. So um, that's my answer. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks so much, Rena. We appreciate you coming on with us. And let's see, we're going to go to the answers of our next true falser, which asks, niacin B3 raises your bad cholesterol, LDL. And uh, let's see, let me get the right shot here. All right, drum roll. 95% say that it's absolutely false. 5% say, yep, it's true. Hmm. It's, uh, it's false. It doesn't raise your bad cholesterol it basically um, lowers your cholesterol moderately, but specifically it lowers the, the real bad particle size. That's the one that out of all the nutrients to take for, um, you know, placking and preventing problems, boy, niacin is right at the top of the list. Potently, it, it works... I mean, like, even, let's just take statins, for example. Statin turns, I mean, it will raise, it might lower your cholesterol, but it raises the, the real bad cholesterol, the small, dense LDL. Statin does that. Niacin will lower that. So, uh, of course, statin is cheap. You can't patent it right now, so it's not going to be promoted. But do your research, and you'll see that it's uh, it's a powerhouse. You should be... Chewing on those niacin throughout the day if you're concerned about cholesterol. 
That's wonderful. All right, there's just too many of these com uh, comments for me to ignore. So Twan, Twan, excuse me, uh, love uh, from Facebook. You changed my life forever. I appreciate your work so much. Thank you. And then immediately thereafter, Carol from Facebook, your work is invaluable. I have shared with so many videos with so many friends and colleagues and used some of them in my mental health training sessions. Thank you. And uh, believe me, folks, well, people online, they can see all this happening as well. But uh, we don't want to ignore those. We want to get to your questions. But it's also great to hear all the positive feedback uh, from, uh, you know, from our audience around the world. Bavana from Facebook, how can someone with an accelerated metabolism effectively do intermittent fasting? Must be one of those weight losers. You're going to have to eat more calories and maybe just do two meals. Um, but definitely do it because uh, if you're concerned about losing too much weight um, versus um, the, getting the benefits of intermittent fasting, uh, I would go for losing more weight because you can always just eat more calories and add more fat to the diet to prevent um, extra weight loss. But also adding um, exercise in a way that will stimulate muscle growth, um, and I've done a recent video on that as well, will help um, raise your muscle uh, strength and the size of the muscles, uh, as well as um, prevent the loss of weight. Um, All right. So Holly from YouTube, I've been on keto for about three months and have lost 45 pounds, ding, ding. But my toenails and fingernails have become very brittle and basically just fall off. What in the heck is going on with Holly? This is why I always recommend um, when you're on keto and you're on doing fasting, you need the electrolytes, the minerals, the trace minerals, you need B vitamins because uh, there's a lot of reasons why your nails, your hair might not do well. Um, it could be anything from low iron to low calcium to low zinc to low B vitamins. And so you want to take those additionals um, and take a, a don't, don't fall for the synthetic versions be, um, because they're made from petroleum. And there's many reasons why the natural and the food-based ones are um, – that's really what you need is you just need to supplement because especially if you're doing fasting, because so many people are going into fasting with a kind of a subclinical deficiency of something. And then everything is exaggerated. Um, that happens to a lot of people. I mean, even the number one, um, like complication from fasting is kind of fainting, um, because you don't have enough electrolytes. You don't store a lot of these electrolytes. So, um, here you are, and then you're drinking water, right, during fasting, and then you dilute your electrolytes, and then you get dizzy, and you might faint. So we want to keep those electrolytes, including sea salt, as well. All right, very good. Let's go to another quiz question. Another true, falser. Okay, true or false? Low iron can cause cold feet. All right, any of you folks with chilly feet, what do you think? True, falser? And let's go uh, move on uh, to our green room, and we're going to get uh, Faggy, if I think I said her name right, uh, from Cleveland. So, Faggy, unmute yourself, and you are, uh, if I push the right button, on with Dr. Berg. Go ahead with your one question. Hi, Dr. Berg. Hello. Okay. Um, hi. So, I have gallbladder problems. I, I still have a gallbladder um, but when I try to do keto, I end up having a lot of pain. And I was wondering what you think about that. I, um, I, I don't really want to get rid of my gallbladder. I, I've heard about a lot of problems after, you know, surgery. So, um, yeah. how should I handle that? Yeah. So many people just don't have the enough bile, uh, bile salts to help digest that fat. So here you go on keto and you, all of a sudden you end up with like, oh my gosh, it's, I feel bloated or I feel right uh, fullness underneath my right rib cage. It spreads to the right side of the shoulder, which I had for 12 years. I didn't know what that was, but you just need more bile salts. So you might want to try um, uh, gallbladder formula, uh, maybe two with right after a meal. And, and then let's see how that goes. Let's say, for example, it feels better, but it's, you still have a problem. You might want to try to search out and find another uh, additional type of bile salt that's mainly used on an empty stomach, and that's called tudka. And you take this tudka in between meals, 
like maybe try one in the morning, one in the afternoon, because what that will do, that will thin the bile sludge that might be backing up and start really creating a nice flow. And boy, you'll feel a, a difference within a couple of days. You'll just go, wow, that, that really handled it. The other couple things that you might want to do to help your fat digestion is not take a lot of extra fat. Like don't, don't do the, the bulletproof coffee right now with the butter. Don't do MCT oil. Don't do the keto desserts right now until you can, you know, get a control over it, you know, increase more vegetables, uh, big salads. And then the other thing is um, choline is, uh, it makes up bile salts. So if you took a choline supplement, that's really good for people that are, uh, have a problem digesting fat. And in fact, choline can help um, a fatty liver. It can greatly help your ability just to, to break down some of these fats. So um, that's what I would do if I were you. Okay, thank you very much. That's great. Good luck, uh, Peggy. Thanks for representing Cleveland so well. And let's see, Andrea from YouTube. And I, <laughs> we, we love our um, pregnant ladies uh, with questions. And Andrea has one. I'm seven months pregnant and wondering what tips you could share about which supplements I should be taking and how much of each. It's a very important topic. Um, right now, I'm, I'm kind of coming up with a prenatal because I mean, I don't understand this. The most important time to uh, for nutrition is when someone's pregnant, right? The most important thing, to, you're growing this baby, and they, they put these uh, prenatal synthetic pieces of garbage in a bottle, and they sell these to women. The cheapest ingredient, all synthetic, high potency. I don't understand that. So right now, I would find a prenatal that's a food-based one, Um and I would also focus on these additional nutrients, given the fact that you're hopefully you're on keto uh, right now because it's very important. Uh, but here are the key nutrients if you're pregnant. Number one, having enough vitamin D. Vital, vital, vital. Number two, having enough DHA or the omega-3. And I would recommend, if you can, cod liver oil. You can give them in little pearls and capsules. Take enough of that because that will give you um, the, D, the EPA, DHA, and it also give you vitamin A and vitamin D at the same time. So it gives you more things than just fish oil. Um, you also need a good trace mineral, so that way you have enough iodine. Maybe you take sea kelp for that. Iodine, you have selenium, really, really important. Make sure you have uh, the B vitamins, especially when you're breastfeeding, because that way you'll have enough breast milk. Um, nutritional yeast can help increase the production of breast milk. Uh, so the trace minerals... Um, the omega-3, the vitamin D, um, all these are really, really key. And maybe what you do is you, on a regular basis, consume really super nutrient-dense foods. And that would be like shellfish, okay? Uh, not every day, but maybe once or twice a week. And then also a salmon and uh, a little bit of liver, a little bit of liver with onions, because that way you have super uh, key nutrients to fortify that growing child. And your child will come out without the scoliosis, without needing braces, without needing um, supports for flat feet. They'll come out a lot better. And uh, uh, the risks for all sorts of uh, immune problems will go away, especially if you breastfeed um, that breast milk doesn't just have colostrum, which is an immune builder, but there's all these antibodies, antigens that your mother gives you from breast milk. And uh, like she's giving you your immune system when you start out. So if you're not breastfed, you're, you're unfortunately going to be kind of lacking in that immune area um, because the formulas they give you are just even worse than the prenatals. So anyway, I, don't, I can go on and on, but I think I'll stop right there. All right. Well, that was a, a well said, doctor. Okay, so there's millions of Americans that, uh, you know, are suffering from anxiety and depression, and there's all sorts of, quote, remedies for them. And Rosa from Facebook wants to know the best way to get off Xanax. Are there some alternatives? I guess she must be anxious. I think the best, the best thing I would start taking immediately is a, is a good uh, vitamin B1, natural B1, nutritional yeast, or there's other ones you can get. 
So the the, um, the B1 is going to be essential. You'll feel better. You'll feel less anxious. And there's a lot of other things you can do too um, that go beyond just doing keto and intermittent fasting, which I recommend because even those two right there will probably decrease the need for those medications. Um, but vitamin D, important. Uh, ashwagandha as a supplement or a tea would be good. Lemon balm tea is another good one. These are all really uh, kind of key uh, no-brainers that I would recommend. Um, but realize that all these probably won't work as well if if your basic eating is not right. So you want to get on this basic keto and intermittent fasting plan. Um, in fact, Steve, remember that interview I did with that, that guy who was going to commit suicide because he had so much um, anxiety and depression. Well, starving to death, that eating. guy. <laughs> So yeah, so he decided I'm gonna do myself in, and I'm gonna, I am going to starve myself to death. So he goes in his room, locks his door. Three days, three days later, he comes out feeling really good, feeling wonderful because he was fasting, and uh, no longer was depressed, no longer was angry, no longer had uh, anxiety. And he said, "What just happened?" He looked up intermittent fasting and got a job now, doing great. Um, so you'd be surprised how your mood would be influenced by working on the, these key things that are so simple. You know, that's such a great story. And I am super affected by carbohydrates and sugar. I, I, Lori, my wife, uh, back before I sort of figured out what was going on, she goes, if you eat one of those brownies, I'm leaving for the evening because I guess the combination of caffeine and all that sugar, whatever's in there just drove me mad. I was Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Uh, or Jekyll, yeah. whichever one's the bad one. And uh, so it really makes a huge difference. What a great story that is that that guy, you know, from being on the edge of the cliff said, hey, wait a minute, you know, feeling better. That's just tremendous. Okay, and the audience yeah. must feel tremendously confident because our quiz question number three asks, true, false, lion can, uh, excuse me, low iron can cause cold feet, and 100% has said that that's not true. Oh, no, sorry, that it's true. Forgive me, it's true. Yeah, they're, they're all correct. You know, it's not just a, a slow thyroid that can cause cold feet. It's low iron. But some of you watching have cold feet. You don't have a thyroid problem. And uh, you might have enough iron. And you're going, why do I have cold feet? Um, well, there's another thing, and I'm going to do a video on this. Um, it's a genetic uh, mutation um, involving this concept of what's called methylation, which I'm not going to get into. But all you need to know is that if, if you have that problem, which is common, um, you have a problem detoxifying um, heavy metals and you have a problem with iron. You, like you'll have a buildup of iron, yet you won't be able to absorb it. So you'll have the symptoms of low iron and high iron at the same time, which is terrible. So one of the big symptoms of low iron is cold feet. So what is the solution for that? <clears throat> well, watch my video and find out, but you'd want to take, um, I think the video is on, I released it on raw liver. No, it's eating more liver. Why liver is important <clears throat> because you need two things. You need um, the correct form of B12, the natural form, and the, the natural form of folate, not folic acid, folate, and larger amounts. And you can get a supplement with that as well. But that'll start on the liver I recently released. It might have been two days ago.